Today we're going to build the T-Rex 550X uh, two blade rotor head. Uh, I already have one side done and we're going to come back to this here in just a minute uh, for how everything comes together. First thing we got to do as usual, um, every fastener is going to need thread locker. So starting with the uh, ball link end on the grip arm, I am going to apply a little bit of fastener uh, thread locker. I typically use uh, Permatex gel, um, just find it's the easiest for me to use on this bench. So one and a half millimeter driver here. Around the side we've got the two grip arm bolts, uh, three by eight millimeter. Uh, these got to come out and apply thread locker here. So small, you don't want to put a whole bunch of torque on these. Uh, you can strip out this grip arm if you're not careful, but standard hand tools um, still snug it pretty good. And we got two bolts here. Get a little bit of thread lock on that one. Yeah, I'm always using uh, the blue kind, the medium strength. You want to be able to use something that you can actually take off with hand tools. Okay, so the grip itself is back together. Right now the inner radial bearing is in place and the outer radial bearing is in place. The rest of the bearing assembly is, is lying here on the workbench to see how it goes back together. So first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the rotor head itself. I currently have one of the swash driver arms off for clarity. Um, inside the, the grip itself, or the, the, the center here, we've got a few different pieces to see how everything goes together. Uh, through the center is a plastic collar, a plastic sleeve. This just reduces friction. Um, and on the outer sides of the of the main rotor head, you have the damper assemblies. Now, if you look, these have a a shoulder to them. Uh, they've got a they're square on one end and rounded off on the other. The square side goes to the inner section of the uh, of the main rotor assembly. So the little bit of bevel is right here on the outside. Now, when we bring this grip arm in, I'm sorry, this this side the grip in with the uh, the spindle shaft, you'll see how it all goes together. Now I am going to want a little bit of synthetic lube on the shaft itself where the the damper runs. Spin it around a little bit. And I'm also going to want just a little bit of synthetic lube on the outside of the damper just to put things together easier. It's going to come in from this side. I'm going to use my large driver here. Go ahead and bring this whole thing through. This uses a four millimeter Okay, that comes through like that. First thing that goes on once we're ready to put the, the grip arm on, there's a brass spacer. This goes between the grip and the main rotor block. Now, the next part slides on is the grip itself. Now that's together. And if you can look in here, the main shaft is, or the spindle shaft is coming through that grip arm right there. So the next things that go together, there is an inner spacer. This goes between the inner race and the first thrust bearing. So I can go ahead and set this in there. There's a couple different ways to do this. This is just one way to show you. Okay, we've got a spacer in there. Now the bearings themselves, the bearings are labeled in and out. This bearing is labeled in, this is the inner race. So this faces in with the groove section facing out. So the label in goes to the inside. I'm gonna set that there. The next piece that comes together is the actual thrust bearing, and for this I'm going to apply a little bit of synthetic lube. I'm using Triflow Synthetic here. This is essentially identical to what Align provides in the kit in the little clear lube bottle. You need to have some on these thrust bearings. So this is called the obverse side of the bearing. It's closed off here. The obverse is open. If you look in the manual, the obverse side goes in. So that will set on top of this inner race like that. Next piece to come together is the race marked out. The, the actual race itself is here. The marker out goes out. That sets on top of this bearing. And then finally there'll be a spacer and the actual uh, bolt itself. So if I put all this together, you go here, then we're going to have the washer itself. I'm going to do a little bit of thread lock. Now the bearing stack comes together out followed by the thrust bearing itself, and then the bearing race marked in, and this whole thing is going to set back inside the grip here. 
you're gentle with it, you can get the whole thing to slide together nice and clean like that. As things start to come together, Okay, now I'll have to come in from the other side with another 4mm driver and we just can tighten up this main shaft, uh, sorry, the spindle shaft through the rotor head. Bring one driver in over here, one through here. Let's make sure that gets torqued down pretty good. Okay, the last piece to go together on this rotor head will be the swash driver arm. Two pieces here. There's a 10mm bolt and on the outside of the arm there is a tiny little washer this washer is very important. This keeps this bolt from binding up the outer race of the bearing. So the washer just connects to the inner race of the bearing. It gets assembled with the Align logo facing up. The thread lock. And it mounts to this boss right here on the rotor head, which takes care of the inner surface of the bearing so it doesn't get bound up. Align's done a great job making this much simpler. Okay, last pieces that need to get addressed. Uh, each side of the actual swash driver plastic arm, there is a small bolt here. You use your one and a half mil driver. Uh, it's going to come through just a tiny bit of thread lock as usual. Too much there. Okay, tighten this one up. We're going to repeat the same process for the other side. Okay. As this comes together, notice we got both grips on, the Align logo up when it gets assembled like this. We've got both swash driver arms on and the swash driver plastic pieces here. Everything has been Loctited or thread locked. 